What's the crack lads? Welcome back to the channel V3.3. Is it the exact same or has it changed a bit? It's very polarizing at the moment. I'm going to go through pace, passing, dribbling, physicality and nets and talk about a couple of different tweaks to the overall gameplay. Is it any different? Let's find out. And as ever, get in touch in the comments below and let me know your impressions and thoughts as well. So we're going to start with pace, boys, and get into the, like, the overall speed of the game. Am I tripping or do these clips look like there's been a slight tweak to when you get a little bit of room from your opponent that they don't really catch you. Now, you might have a look at these clips and say, yeah, but Salah should never, you know, be caught by a defender like this. But it was actually happening with a little bit more regularity before V3.3. Again, I honestly don't know, am I tripping or not? Get in touch in the comments below. Here's a noticeable one here that when we just take it here, we just leave him for dead. And then also the cutting in. When you seem to cut in now, there seems to be a little bit more acceleration. It seems to be about 5% which can be considered placebo a lot of the times, depending on who you're running with, when they're running, how much stamina that they have. But it was not unusual before V3.3 for you to be caught in these straight lines. Again, you'll see here the distance that you cover when you give a true ball, when you're running onto the ball, you can see it here. And these players that I'm using are not like 100 speed, 100 acceleration overall, but the cutting angled kind of runs seem to be tweaked a tiny bit. As I said, I don't know am I 100% kind of right even in this but there just seems to be a bit of a change there we're also going to talk about dribbling so this kind of falls into something that i feel i have tested massively like i've tested this we're going to see some similar clips of tight turns tight cut-ins i think the game has given a little bit more freedom within tight position and tight tight positions and tight possessions like you can see here with the little dribbles now obviously ignoring the bad defending from the opponent that's going to be something that's pointed out in the comments and rightly so but it's this kind of like tight left stick dribbling with the r1 or your special controls whatever button on your bumper that you don't use for sprint so i use r2 to sprint um that is going to be the difference here with r1 and then taking your hand off it putting on the r1 again left stick dribbling there's a lot of uh, a lot to like about that again with the turns here little sharp turn beautiful double touch that you're going to see here with Messi and the responsiveness in those tight positions now this one definitely I feel is dependent on how you play and I feel like that if you do a lot of tight dribbling in the box and you come up against a guy that's a good defender a lot of this stuff doesn't really come into it but I do feel that they've also probably just opened it up a little bit more in these tight pockets of space the freedom still isn't where I would want it to be in the box like you'll see here with Messi this guy just can't defend uh, my position in here because I'm just in the perfect spot that when I pick the ball up here in this position, it's a one-on-one, -on -one, which just give him a little cheeky, like 360, and then straight into the double touch before he can react. Um, you know, so I do feel like that that's kind of something that's always been in the game. I'm not going to sit here and say like, oh, that's brand new feature in V3.3, but it's more so in the tight positions here that when you like take those little touches and they're gone. And then it's that mixture of taking it out in the wide play and being able to cut inside with little tiny left foot stick dribbles. And this is all left, left stick dribbling, lads. There's nothing major about this. And I'm using a player that a lot of you guys might not know, uh, but he's a cult hero on the channel. But if you check his stats, he doesn't have amazing dribbling. Like he doesn't have like what you would consider Neymar-esque dribbling and tricks. But he's able to hold the ball. He's able to cut in. He's able to cross the ball there wherever he wants it. And the most notable thing that I found is in these pockets of space, these tiny little pockets of space, the game was always free enough in these areas, but it's more that when you get into the box here, that would the game kind of clogged up a bit. Now we're just going to cut in here, we're going to do a lovely little shot there. It just seems a little bit more fluid, like that's what I would call it, dribbling fluidity. Am I wrong? I don't know. Again, I'm looking for your opinions on it because you can pick clips and make it show whatever that you want, but these are just raw clips that I'm showing while we were streaming. Um... They're not cherry pick clips, if you know what I mean. We also need to talk about passing. So since V3.3, I have switched from playing on a level 3 pass assist to the least pass assist, which is level, or a level 2 pass assist to level 3. So it kind of opens up a lot of these passes where you'll see that they seem to have made a slight variation that if you don't manually defend, the defenders, I don't think they've improved the passing. I don't think they've improved the passing. They definitely haven't nerfed level one or, you know, ping pong style passing with the one touches and stuff, which are still very easy to do. But I do feel like what they've done is they've kind of switched up and tweaked the way that the defenders react to the flight of the ball. That there seems to be a little bit more kind of freedom between where the ball actually goes and where it ends up. Like that pass, in fairness, wasn't really, you know, it wasn't really that much possible. Like or here where he's running in a straight track I cut in 
And this is another one. This pass here, um, obviously the pass assistance is going to make a difference to that. But there's a lot of clips here that you can see, especially this one here with Cruyff. We're kind of splitting it through defenders. Now, you can obviously talk about the defensive weakness there, the defensive AI behavior. He should stick out his leg and get that. But that's just kind of a bigger issue with the game, uh, so to speak, with the way the, the defenders behave. Sometimes they'll block everything. Sometimes they'll block nothing. Um, so I do feel like that the passing is very dependent. Like that pass there, like those type of passes, I don't think were as pre uh, prevalent or prevalent in um, before V3.3. Again, it's a tiny little tweak. This pass here again, uh, when we go through, watch this pass that you're going to do. I'm just going to like take it on the wide flank. We're going to wait for the runners. We're going to cut in and then we're going to pick our pass. And then we're going to do our little one too in around the back and a finish. Just kind of adds to the fluidity of it. But I do feel that if you have probably played with level one pass assist uh, all the time, that you can, you know, you probably might notice it as much. We're also going to talk about the physicality. So as I said earlier, lads, it's easy to pick clips and, and cherry pick it and say like, oh yeah, look at this different and or else pick clips and say, no, this is the very same. The gameplay will allow you to do both. As you know, I've tried to do here is try to give different, um, just kind of movements. That's what it's about. Like little movements like that and being able to kind of see how the players that react. Now, this is one big thing that I noticed. Now, since the time of recording these clips, I think this has kind of reverted back a little bit. So definitely let me know in the comments below when these kind of runs before, the player would usually leave his leg out. Now, this is a great example here where I'm running 50-50 and I'm actually sandwiching this player who's got low energy and low stamina and he still holds his own. I can't actually trigger that animation for him to put his leg out. Again, another sharp touch there with Salah where I just roll him off the shoulder with that little flick there with the left foot. Tight dribbling combined with the physicality. Again, with Neymar, Neymar's not the strongest player. You're going to burst past here and just go straight in a straight line. And even though I'm caught up, I'm still able to kind of keep that distance between the opponent's uh, defender and the ball. So I do feel that that is slightly changed as well. These are all minuscule changes. Honestly, they are minuscule changes. You still have the issue there where that is a stonewall penalty, in my opinion, and the collision system just doesn't trigger it. So it's not like that that has changed too much. That is still a huge issue that needs to be worked on. The collisions in general, I think, are the poorest they've been in a long, long time. Now, when you talk about the collisions, if somebody fouls you or they do a shoulder charge or anything like that, it obviously is manual defending. And I do think that if you are a high level manual defender, you won't notice a lot of this stuff. If you're coming up against a guy that knows how to manually defend, manually trigger defensive animations and stuff like that, I feel like a lot of this stuff is placebo. But I do feel that there is a kind of a slightly different varied play to the game. And I was kind of struggling what to do on this video because... I feel like that if you're on one side of the argument, you will say that, you know, I'm just trying to make that there's changes. And then on the other side, I know a lot of people that have commented on the live streams and watched the videos are saying that the game feels really, really nice. Now, we are going to talk about net physics as well. Let me know your thoughts on it. I think that they've slightly tweaked these. Um, they've kind of like changed a couple of this and that the nets actually sway a little bit more. But honestly, lads, I really am torn on this update, right? I really am torn on it. So I do want your opinions on it. I do feel that there's a couple of things that they've tweaked. Depending on what percentage they've tweaked them by, I'm not 100% sure because we didn't get any patch notes. So lads, that is it for this V3.3 breakdown slash discussion. Even doing this video and recording this video, I'm still a little bit torn and I feel like I'm going to be... I think that people are still going to be polarized on V3.3. I think a large portion of where I'm at with V3.3 is I have literally played about 20 games and I've probably won 18 of them on my road to Division 1. So I feel like that my attitude with the game is slightly swayed by those results, that I've been grinding out results, that I've been getting results, that I've been scoring nice goals, that I've been ripping people apart. And when I concede goals, it's either a moment of stupidity from the AI or it's a mistake for mine, or I come up against a really good player that's better than me, and I can take the loss on the chin. Stupid stuff is still happening. You saw that Stonewall penalty. But I want to know your thoughts on V3.3. Honestly, am I tripping, right? Do I feel like that the game has slightly changed? Yes. Do other people feel that it has? Yes. But also, you could be watching this and be saying, what am I smoking? Am I completely, um, you know, seeing a different game than you guys? I don't know. That's why I'm kind of putting it out there. It's kind of a different type of video that I'm doing. Um, and we all have opinions on it. So let me know your thoughts, honestly. Let me know your honest thoughts on it, and maybe drop what pass assistance that you're using as well, because I do think that that kind of frees up a lot of the passes into space, which a lot of people mightn't do. Um, and especially if you come up against a really top-class opponent, 
it can be very difficult to see those passages of play because you're just completely swarmed. And you can you can go on to co-op and have a look at that if you're playing 2v2 or 3v3. That's kind of how the experience is like when you're playing a top division opponent. And we've had a few of those on the live stream. But yeah, that is it for me, lads. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. We'll be back very soon and I'll talk to you then.